favor. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Just uh, looking at our um, 
our current evacuations, uh, and I'll probably uh, touch on the uh, largest area first. Currently in the Central Highlands, which is at Emerald, uh, we are running four evacuation centres. There are 508 people currently residing in those evacuation centres. So there's probably about 1,000 people that have relocated to family and friends uh, in other parts of the town. There's 1,000 houses that have suffered the inundation inside their premises at various levels. There are approximately 3,000 houses that have water in and around their yards, so underneath their houses. We're advised that 100% of uh, industrial premises have suffered partial or full water inundation. 75% commercial premises have suffered partial or full uh, water inundation. Power has been disconnected to up to 500 homes and at least 250 houses and 300 commercial premises are going to require some form of electrical inspection prior to uh, the, uh, the um, power being reconnected. We don't expect the, uh, the Vince Lester Bridge across the town, which has been cut in half, to be visible until Tuesday. And although visible, I would say that it will still need to be inspected, and therefore we ask for motorist patience in that uh, space. We are looking at the resupply of uh, Emerald, and we're looking at the uh, various facilities to do that. And we're talking with both the local disaster management group and the district disaster management group, and those uh, activities are well in hand. Moving to Rockhampton, in the uh, Rockhampton has a uh, an evacuation centre established at the uh, sports centre of Central uh, Queensland University at Yamba and they have a capacity for up to 2,000 people. Currently the numbers there are very low. There are four persons uh, currently uh, at the um, facility. The highway at the time of briefing was still open. We are watching that and it does change hour by hour as we get closer to the point where the highway will eventually be cut. We are saying to people to listen to or ring into 13, 19, 14, or at least listen to new forecasts. And as soon as that becomes impossible, uh, we will advise uh, of that facility closing. The uh, commercial flights, as the Deputy Commissioner has indicated, uh, will, uh, according to advice we've received, will cease operations this afternoon into Rockhampton and it could be some time before those commercial flights are recommenced. However, the residents in and around Rockhampton can expect to see um, uh, light aircraft and rotary wing helicopter assets flying uh, from the airport in, uh, in operations in support of a uh, disaster management response. So that's uh, really for Rockhampton and Emerald. Um, Theodore, again, is still uh, totally evacuated and uh, will remain so for some time. The uh, water peaks are going back to what they were uh, prior to the town being evacuated, so they're going back to the same levels. And uh, that's it for the people of Sorry, are we out of time? Please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's very dry. Um, but how, how is that being um, uh, taken in and, and what's the response in the community? I mean, are people getting tested or what, how is it out there? Thank you. Um, certainly most of those food drops in. Yeah. Uh, certainly uh, the food drops that we're talking about are, are into isolated communities, so that's by mainly by rotary wing aircraft, of course. Um, the, there is no community that is actually desperate at this point in time. Uh, we're trying to stay ahead of that. Um, one of our greatest challenges over the coming weeks, and it will be weeks, is not only to resupply uh, these towns in these next few days until uh, the highways reopen, but it will be to service all of those very small communities and isolated farms and properties right across the central and southern parts of Queensland that will start to run out of, of uh, necessities. So that, will, that is a huge focus for us. Um, and uh, obviously we do that in conjunction with the local disaster management groups. Are you expecting an evacuation from right? um, Look, it is highly likely. Um, these again are getting to record level floods, um, but uh, we do have time uh, in terms of the number of days that we, of lead up that we have and we are keeping the community informed. 
we are hoping that many people will choose to self evacuate if, if that is necessary. We also, over the last few days, and the Minister may wish to comment on this, is utilise the emergency uh, alert system uh, that is in place for us. What are you doing there in terms of the uh, population of Surat? I'm sorry? Um, how, how many people are in Surat? Yeah, it's about 650 in Surat at the present time. Um, the numbers may be slightly smaller than that because people are away on holidays. Um, how do the SDS and emergency services um, personnel handle that? Um, how they're handling all of this? This is a massive um, event and they've been on call for quite a number of days now. Um, fatigue management, whether it be with the, the full time emergency services personnel and police, uh, and also, of course, uh, our SES personnel is front of mind the uh, disaster coordinators. Uh, there's been a lot of work done to identify relief staff, particularly through SES volunteers. Uh, they are being moved to uh, centres throughout the state. Um, I was in uh, Dolby yesterday and met up with uh, SES volunteers from the Sunshine Coast in Brisbane. Um, so there are people being moved around uh, various parts of the state to give the local people the relief and support that they need. Uh, discussions have been held uh, with uh, our Victorian counterparts and offers of assistance are coming through. But at this stage, uh, it's been managed with uh, Queensland resources, but certainly uh, as time goes by, particularly as we move into the recovery phase, uh, fatigue management will be what it is and will remain a significant issue. Uh, but there's a lot of work being done to make sure that people get the relief and support that they need. How likely is it that the state will need outside help from New South Wales, Victoria needs in the Commonwealth? Um, if I can uh, answer that, um, Victoria and New South Wales are actually providing um, special staff to uh, assist the SES both here uh, in this centre uh, and uh, particularly out in the Southern Downs area and that will start uh, Monday but as you can imagine uh, there are a number of issues that we have to take into, into account uh, and primary to that is, uh, is certainly the ability to house those people because putting them into these into these areas in fact adds to some of the complications with the uh, in the evacuation centres and what have you. But that is uh, planned for uh, for this coming week from Victoria and New South Wales. We're also uh, currently in negotiations uh, for some specialist policing staff uh, to assist and uh, and uh, in fact I've been talking to the deputy commissioner from Victoria this morning on that very issue. Um, and as those details uh, become known, we will provide them to you. And in the um, we, uh, that is an issue, and again, uh, the uh, Minister may wish to uh, talk about that overall first. Um, but um, basically, uh, we have, in Condamine and Theodore,